Okay, here we're going to take a look at the stereochemistry of some cyclic compounds, essentially meaning the chiral centers are on a carbon of the ring. And for the most part, it's not much different than what we've been doing. Um, you're going to follow the same rules and the same logic that you've been using. So let's start with this first example on the top left. And if it helps, you can certainly draw in your hydrogens at these 3D centers. So I'll put a hydrogen here and here. Okay, and to determine whether or not these are chiral centers, all you want to do is look and see if there's four different groups around the carbon. So this first one on top, well, one group's the fluorine, a second group's the hydrogen, third group is this CH2, and the fourth group is this CH with the fluorine attached. So there's four different groups there, and we'll mark that as a chiral center. And then the same logic for this bottom carbon, four different groups around that, that's a chiral center. But what you want to recognize in this case, and it's actually easier to see in rings than acyclic molecules, is that you have a plane of symmetry that cuts this in half. For that reason, this molecule is achiral, and it's a meso compound. Now let's compare that to the molecule below. The only difference in this one is that the bottom fluorine is back, so you would still say that these carbons are chiral centers. Okay, but now, if you try to draw a symmetry plane here, one fluorine's above the plane, the other's below. They're not directly mirroring one another. For that reason, there isn't a symmetry plane. And that means this molecule is achiral, or is chiral. Okay, the other thing to keep in mind is with rings, they're kind of like double bonds because they actually lock these groups in place. You can't rotate around a ring. So this single bond here, you cannot rotate around it. Now if you have trouble visualizing that, build a molecular model of this and try to rotate it. You won't be able to. All right, this next example, uh, very similar. We have a chiral center here and a chiral center here. And you might at first glance be tempted to draw a symmetry plane, but what happens is this double bond desymmetrizes that side of the ring. For that reason, you can't draw a plane of symmetry. And this is a chiral molecule. All right, the next example, if you look at it, what you should immediately spot, even though there's a ring coming off of this three-dimensional center, you have this side of the ring, which is identical to this side of the ring. So there's kind of symmetry through that ring. But basically what that means is there's not four different groups. That means this is not a chiral center. And if there's no chiral centers, it's just an achiral molecule. Our final example down here at the bottom, it may be useful 
um, on these carbons to draw in the hydrogens. These are the only ones we have to consider because you never have chiral centers at double bonds and you don't have chiral centers at CH2s because there's two hydrogens. So these are the only two that are in question. What you want to do is look to see if you can find four different groups. So let's start at the top. The hydrogen's a group. Then you have um, down here at the bottom, this tertiary carbon, that's a group. Okay, and then if you look to the left and the right, you have a CH2 and a CH2. Now your first thought might be, well, those are the same. But you can go as far out as you need to find a point of difference. So if I trace just a little bit further in both directions, I find a CH2 versus the CH with a double bond. That's enough to break the symmetry and give us four different groups. For that reason, this is a chiral center. And if you do the same process at the bottom, you'll find a chiral center down here. You can't draw any symmetry planes. You know, if you tried to draw one here, again, that double bond is on the right but not on the left, so you don't have symmetry there. And then the same thing would be true if you tried to draw a symmetry plane here. The double bond keeps that from happening. Here's a question that I want you to think about for a moment. If you look at this and try to figure out you know, where the chiral centers are, sometimes it's actually easiest to eliminate what can't be chiral centers. Well, it's easy to eliminate the bromine. You can eliminate any of the CH3 groups because those have three hydrogens. You can eliminate any of the CH2 groups because those have two hydrogens. And we can eliminate this carbon because it has two carbon, two methyl groups attached. So that leaves us to having to consider this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, and then the one down at the end. Let me just highlight that in blue because that's easy to spot. That's not a chiral center because you have a methyl and a methyl. Let me draw in the hydrogens at these red dots. And then if you look at any of these, you should be able to find actually four different groups. So just like our last example, here on the ring you have a hydrogen, this tertiary carbon, and then we have this side of the ring which is different from the right side of the ring. Then down here at the bottom, the same analysis, you may have to go a little further. And we go, we got a match there, still a match to a CH2, then we get here versus here you finally find a point of difference. A quaternary carbon versus that tertiary carbon. So that's a chiral center. Same process here and here. So you have four chiral centers in this molecule. One final example here that I want you to take a second to think about. So we want to figure out the relationship between these two. We have a chiral center here, here, and here. It's the same in the other one. All right, but now if you look at the three-dimensionality, the OH, that was inverted. Then 
you have this chiral center coming off of the ring. That goes from a dash to a wedge. That one was inverted. Then finally, we have this OH. That one was not inverted. That one was kept the same. So what happened here? We inverted more than one, but not all the chiral centers. So if you invert all the chiral centers, you have enantiomers. But if you just invert some of them, that gives us a pair of diastereomers.